How about the 0 0.05 number? Where does that go? The end um, for the credits yeah. column. The best place to put this is down here. This is the final concentration of the ammonia. OK, very good. Should we put that uh, in uh, the change, too? Let's see. What number should this be? Zero. Yeah, that's implied in the problem, that we started with nothing. And once we put in this number, now we can see that you're right. If we're going from here to here, we know this change must be 0 0.05. But conceptually, it's better to start by putting in this. This is what we were told. And then we figured out that that's also the change if we started with 0. And this is a plus or a minus. Plus. And how about these? Minus. Someone asked me before, how do we know to use a start change end table? Well, if, this, if all the information was already in terms of changes, then we don't need a start change end table. But when you have information about starting points and ending points, then it really helps to use the table to organize your thinking. Because otherwise, you're going to confuse the numbers that are about starts with the numbers that are about ends with the numbers that are about changes. Um, so that's, that's the big clue here, that we have both starting and ending amounts, and not just change amounts that we should really focus on making the table in this case. OK, so uh, now we can continue trying to get numbers for the table. Well, um, actually, this is, uh, you can see here, there's a, a shortcut. Could we just go now with our, since the, we have one liter and we have all of those numbers, could we just go to the K, uh, C, and solve? What, which row do we want to plug into the K, C? Begin and then uh, start. Now, not both of them, just one of them. So the KC is, should only be based on the concentrations at equilibrium. Okay. Which of these rows represents sorry, uh, equilibrium? Uh, middle. Which of these rows represents what the concentrations will be in equilibrium? Oh, uh, oh uh, the end? Yeah, the end here is equilibrium. The, reaction, the net reaction stops going forward when we reach the equilibrium. Maybe instead of calling it a start change end, we should call it a start change equilibrium table in this case, because the end point is the equilibrium point. That's when the net reaction stops, when you've gotten to equilibrium. So the last row here is the equilibrium. So we need to um, obviously put our product, but the, we would also have to identify the equilibrium. I'm glad that you brought that up. Remember, there's two different types of reactions. There's reactions that go to completion, and there's reactions that go to equilibrium. Oh. This one is one that goes to equilibrium. What's the clue that this is going to equilibrium? Well, they gave us an equilibrium constant. We only use the limiting reagent idea for reactions that go to completion. Remember that the limiting reagent is what you're going to run out of. But when the reaction goes to completion, you're not going to run out of anything because you're going to stop before you run out of something. So what's the technique for solving problems about reactions that go to completion? Find the limiting reagent. What's the technique for solving problems that go to equilibrium? Use the equilibrium constant. We would never use an equilibrium constant for a reaction that goes to completion, and we would never use a limiting reagent for a reaction that goes to equilibrium. Okay. Um, so again, which of these rows would we use to calculate the equilibrium constant? The last. The last one. Now, I think you're already well launched in trying to figure out the, if you can figure out these changes, you can figure out these rows. So that would be good practice in the stoichiometry that we worked through before. But that would be pretty tedious on the test to work all that out. Um, there's a, a shortcut here. This number is very small relative to these numbers. So the changes will be very small, because they're all going to be just like three or two times as much as this, basically. So we can just say that these are going to change by small amounts. What is 3 minus a small number? It's approximately still 3. This is not going to change by a very significant amount. When you subtract a very, if you subtract, say, 0 0.05 from 3, that's like 2.95. Well, we would usually round that off to 3 when we're doing a division. Um, and if you subtract um, here, if you subtract, let's see, this would be um, 0 0.025 over here. Um, well, that again, that would be close enough to 1. And I can't figure out what this would be. I guess this would be 3 halves of 0 0.05 if you already worked it out. 
you already worked it out, great. But anyway, it's going to be a very small number compared to 3. So we don't even need to bother doing those calculations. So this number should be what? Uh, one. Yeah, approximately 1. So now we're ready for the next step. So if I were taking the test and I started doing like what I was doing, getting like crazy yeah. decimals and like, so I should just know probably there's a faster way? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's a very good point. If you find yourself doing involved calculations, you should say, think there's a faster way. The test is designed to be done without involved calculations. And what do you do if you can't see the way to, to do it without those calculations? Well, it's probably better just to take a guess and move to the next question. Because even if you get the problem right, it's not worth losing the time and missing five or six other questions down the road. Um, so yeah, um, basically you should never do involved calculations on the test. You should either find the trick to avoid them, or if you can't find the trick, just take a guess on that problem. Okay. So let's try to finish off the problem here. We still have some work to do. Um, just divide, right? Okay, let's go ahead and work that out on paper. Let's see. Now, it looks like you're still trying to find these changes. This is the technique for finding these changes. But we decided we didn't need to find these changes because they're so small that we know that the ending amounts will still be 3 and 1, approximately. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't even bother calculating the 0.05 into these changes. Remember, which row do we really need? All we really need is the bottom row. And we know that these will be approximately 1 and 3. Oh, so yeah, then you just do the k. Let's try that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you write the general expression? I write the general expression for the KC. I think you might have some trouble with the calculation there. Okay, so we start by writing the general expression for the KC. We know we put the product on the top. And we put the starting materials on the bottom. And I'll notice that we want to use the equilibrium concentrations. Yes. But there's still something I left out. Exponents. The exponents. That's right, which I think you got. Yes. So the exponents here should be 2 and 3. This is where we really need to balance the equation. Mm -hmm. OK, so we can't forget about those exponents. It's always a good idea to write the general formula first and only then plug in. Uh, I know it seems like it saves time to just plug in immediately, but it doesn't do us any good if we make a mistake. It's better to write the general formula first and then plug in. It's not writing things down that takes a long time, but making mistakes and getting confused. So now what numbers are we going to plug in here? 0 0.05 squared divided by 1 divided by 3. Well, we need to work out 0 0.05 squared on paper. I can find some room for that. Wait, it's. Uh, Did I make a mistake? Uh -huh. It's 3 to the third. Yeah. Oh, I didn't follow my own advice of checking. So let's see. 3, you're absolutely right. So it's like uh, basically 3 divided by 3 to the third. Right. So 3 divided by uh, 27. Yeah. And so that's. Where did you get this number 3 on the top? Um, it's about 2. Point seven. It's like 2.75. I just said it was close enough. So let's see. We've got 0 0.05. 0 0.05. 
So I would work this out like this. And so far, so good? But it's, isn't it? Um, and now, how many decimal places are there? Four. One, two, three, four. So maybe I, so it's not three. It's 0.0025. Yes. Okay. 0 0.05 times 0 0.05 is not three. It's yeah. 0 0.0025. I'm okay. not sure if I follow. Divided by 27? 